there, everybody. Michael Gray and Nathaniel Hoover are playing Ghost Trick Phantom Detective, Chapter 14. <laughs> we need to think about that one. Yeah, 14. <laughs> we're, we're having problems counting up beyond uh, into double digits. Yeah. Okay, so we're at the park now. The park where Camilla was kidnapped, and um, Camilla had the important piece of evidence on her. So we kind of want to find that evidence. So this is an interesting segment here. Um, minor puzzle segment, just getting all the way to Lynn. You think she could have been nice and stayed by the phone? <laughs> no. What? What is that thing? It's a man with a large hat. Ah! He's out doing a, a chicken food delivery, except he stopped to... Yeah, I was going to say, it looks like a, a drumstick shoved onto his nose. <laughs> yeah, because he's the chicken guy. Okay. Welcome to Blonde Bear's Chicken and Tank Honor. We saw him in a previous chapter, but you weren't around for that. No, well, I was around, just not around here. Wherever here is. Well, you weren't ordering chicken. You you were getting burgers or something like that. That's entirely possible. Just get it to Lynn, and we're going to talk to her. Actually, she looked more like she'd had some bad sushi or something. Yeah. Something horrible. Bad sushi. It was horrible. So there's the thing which was on the background of the jail cell. Okay. Not the corpse, but the thing which is... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we just decorate our jail cells with corpses. you think Lynn would be um, a bit more nonchalant about seeing a corpse, because... <laughs> you know, when she dies, she doesn't seem to care, but now that somebody else has died, she's really worried. And Nathaniel, you might recognize this character. You saw him for like 10 seconds and you thought it was a girl. Yes. Is it not a girl? It's not a girl. Why are you not a girl? It's the guardian of the park. That's what he calls himself. Wait, wasn't there some sort of time limit that he had until sunset or something? Sunrise, sunrise, but it's just... S sunrise. Sun isn't going to rise for like another three hours. So, wow, this... <laughs> <laughs> and this is him harassing the innocent detective with his flyers. <laughs> so he is trying to be a hero in saving the little girl who has been kidnapped. Yeah, not the most efficient way to travel through that area, but certainly stylish. Mm hmm. And there she is, hiding the important evidence. Very polite person, you know, he bows to her before kidnapping her. He looks like a Zelda shopkeeper or something. He does, in fact. All three of the Zelda shopkeepers in Twilight Princess mm. look like that. I think it was explained that they were related, but I don't. I'm not sure that's a good explanation. 
Ouch. So is that the manipulator at work? Um, could be. We'll find out. We'll find out very shortly. Somebody did a ghost trick in order to kill this man. Or in order to save the girl, not realizing that Funny Hat Man was on the other side. Darn it, Nathaniel! Quit spoiling everything! I'm not spoiling anything, it's conjecture! It's the plot twist that we're gonna learn about. Oh well. It's only spoiling it when you confirm that my conjecture is actually the right thing. Which is incredibly rare, I might add. Yeah. Judging from my track record as saying that this guy was actually a girl, we should just learn to ignore the things that I say that are predictions or guesses. Well, he used to be a girl. It's going to be a plot what? point. <laughs> no, I'm just making things up at this point. Uh -huh. But yes, we have somebody else here. We have another ghost. Ray, when someone asks you if you're a god. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think the... Um, ah, never mind. We're going to get to something more important than what I was going to say. Time to talk to the other ghost. It's a boy! Congratulations! Hey! Listen! Yes! Hooray! We get the dog again. I have never been so excited about a dog. That's why I brought you specifically here for this chapter. I appreciate that, Michael. <laughs> like, you have the two missile chapters. You need to get the other missile chapter. This is... <laughs> I'm glad you asked. Let me explain how I'm now a ghost. <laughs> when we last saw him, he was doing this, trying to get out through the... <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> Using his excellent sense of smell, he follows her to the park. <laughs> He's so enthusiastic, I love it. <laughs> Exclamation marks at every sentence. Don't know! And the bad guy killed him. The kidnapper. Ah. Uh, and appropriately, a grave <laughs> was already there. Yeah. <laughs> I, I guess I died, and then I was unconscious. Usually works the other way around. Yeah. So yes, you were right. When he woke up, Camilla was killed, crushed to death by this thing. Interesting. By Mino. It sort of looks like that, uh, I know it's supposed to be an open casket lid, but it looks like a TV screen, like a monitor that's set up there. I think it's supposed to be a monument. We're going to learn more about that thing later on. It's, it's, it's the thing that the crazy man in the park is trying to protect. Tombstone TV. Yes. Perfect for watching TV while you're dead. Graveyard discount billboards. And this is something that's interesting. Missile's ghost trick, uh, his powers are green, whereas Sissel's are red. Ghost tricks, now in Technicolor. <laughs> I 
But it makes you wonder why the statue started to fall in the first place. It was connected to this lever that the guy just pulled. Oh, is that what happened? I have to imagine that's it. Okay, I didn't realize there was lever pulling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, he didn't do it on purpose. So this is where we learn that a uh, missile can travel a lot farther than Sissel can. I mean, he's a missile after all. Yeah, he's, he's pretty awesome. Because short-range missiles would just be silly. <laughs> you know, sort of like the, the cannonballs that just sort of roll out of the cannon right into the ground in front of it. Yeah. But, I mean, if one of those drops on your foot, that, that could hurt. Uh, yeah, it could do that. Anyway, um, Missile also has different ghost trick powers than Sissel. Do, do, do. We're gonna find out what it is in just a moment. Leaf Core! Cool. And they're the same shape! Mm hmm. He can swap two things with the same shape. Cool. I like it. So it's slightly different from a uh, Sissel. And we have a brand new game mechanic. Pretty cool. <laughs> and that's how I became flat. Meager expanded vocabulary from the Pomeranian. He's been playing Oregon Trail. Yeah. Doling out rations to his travelers. <laughs> It's Oregon Trail, not Oregon Trail. Rar. <laughs> Rar. Uh, now that I live in Oregon, got at least one O, <laughs> if not two, in the title. Oh, I'm saying now that I live in Oregon, I, I actually traveled along the Oregon Trail. Believe it or not, just drove around it. Um, it's not too exciting, but they have a lot of historical markers and such. Did you shoot more meat than you can carry back to the wagon? I got a speeding ticket. <laughs> the same thing at all <laughs> the, the, sort of the same thing i don't know anyway um we're talking over the puzzle which is being explained <laughs> uh, but yeah the historical oregon trail really does follow along that uh, long river pretty cool I want to get an Oregon Trail license plate, but uh, the DMV right now is convinced that I don't live in the state, so they they won't accept it. <laughs> now here would be a cool puzzle, if you had to manipulate something to transform something into the right shape like if there was like if the football had wings on it or something like that and you needed to clip off the wings so that the football was the same shape to be swapped nathaniel you are just you know two for two in guessing what's <laughs> going to happen <laughs> because i swear whoever, whoever is responsible for this game thinks the way i think about uh some of these puzzles and writes dialogue the way or at least has the characters saying the kinds of things that I would be saying if I were that character. Which is just getting me all the more excited to actually buy this and play this at some point. Yeah, it's the next chapter when that's going to happen, which is the next video. So Nicola's going to be around for that. Okie doke. Not you, sorry. Hmm. I was noticing that, and this is my one digression for the video, uh, playing New Super Mario Bros. Wii, I had made a, uh, my own homebrew Super Mario World that I started in high school and has sort of been in on indefinite hiatus back and forth forever. And New Super Mario Bros. Wii has so many things that I'm like, I used that in my game like five years, ten years before you guys came out with it. So it's always interesting to see people who think like me in the game industry. That's interesting, because usually, you know, you know, people say it's disturbing that there's somebody in the game industry who thinks like me. I'm a little jealous. They're getting all the credit for stuff I came up with like a decade ago, but, you know, whatever. 
I still get to play it, and that's fun, so I can't complain. I still have yet to play New Super Mario Brothers Wii. What? This is like that park level in Scribble Knots where it's like, clean up the garbage. How did you get a tin can up in the tree? Like, why is this park such a mess? <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, we saw that it's because we spun around the, um, the whatever you call it. The circle the guy is on and it sent some of his pamphlets flying into the air. But here's what we do. We have the basketball. We are getting the basketball inside the umbrella. And then we're going to swap the the basketball with the tire. Thereby knocking the football down so the football is now within range. That's so clever. I did it all nice and neat there, but it's really a lot more difficult to figure out than you <laughs> oh, <I'm> expect. Sure. <laughs> Now, are you going to be able to reach that? Yeah. I mean, when you play this game on your own, you'll just be playing around, seeing what Missile can do, seeing what Sissel can do. Dramatic countdown. <laughs> no. This is actually one of Missile's powers. It'll, I don't think it's stated, but he is really good at stopping time at like the last possible second. <laughs> he does that like three times over the course of this game. It's it's amazing. So, swap the football with the crazy statue. <laughs> and he collapses in the exact same way he collapses if he gets hit with a giant slab of concrete. <laughs> All right. So the first time I played this game, I thought the solution to the puzzle would be to prevent Camilla's kidnapping and undo, like, everything which happened in the previous four chapters, but that's not the case. Wait, that's a problem. If you brought Missile back to life, wouldn't that undo all of the puzzle solving that you just did? That is a question. Um, maybe? Yeah, it would, because Missile died before all the puzzle solving happened. Well, I guess yeah, you'd have to have Missile avert that situation from happening in the first place, prevent the lever from being pulled after coming back to life. So you could still do it, you'd just have a brand new puzzle. Yeah, but, you know, I, I would think that maybe you would try to manipulate it so the, you know, you pull the level lever early so it falls on the kidnapper and the little girl is safe. And missiles and leaf. This has to be a weird experience for Lynn, you know, talking <laughs> dog. Oh, hey, my dog talks now. Huh. I'm a leaf on the wind. Yeah. You think Missile would have been smart and simply jumped to one of the nearby cores, but no, he just gets blown away. Well, Missile might have been surprised also. Yeah, but... Question is, what happens if the leaf gets burned up or torn apart with Missile still in there? 
I don't know. He might just be a free-floating spirit. Which is possible, you know, that happens whenever we go back in time. You're free-floating when because you're stuck at the same location where the corpse was. So it's possible to be in an area without a core, but, you know, extenuating circumstances. Anyway, we've got the evidence and we've given it to Lynn. <laughs> Which is the whole reason why we went to the park in the first place. <laughs> really? I just thought it was to drop big rocks on things. And by huge coincidence, this person has a lot of uh, plot information for us. Or he thinks that Lynn is beautiful. I'm just realizing right now, you have no idea what this is. That's okay, it's wonderful. <laughs> I love being confused. Ten years ago, Lynn was kidnapped here in the park. Oh, I just I was making my Super Mario World homebrew. <laughs> yeah, she was kidnapped and then she was saved by Detective Jowd, and, you know, that inspired her to become a detective and stuff like that. Sounds like a Tenacious D song, Rock of the Gods. It does, yeah. No, but it's... <laughs> Meanwhile, nothing is different. Missile is the Rock of the Dogs. Wait, Gods. Uh, <laughs> I'm so confused now. that HD monument over there. Yeah, so that's why we have this convenient um, <laughs> place for Missile's dead body to be laid to rest. <laughs> we have a rock which came down from heaven. Or not, yeah, it's a meteorite. You know meteorites, right? Yeah. You know, they come smashing into the hillside, little bug person starts swirling around telling you what to do, get into a fight on your way back home, your dog gets into a fight, Pokey uses you as a shield, you know, meteors. Yeah. So it's not a shooting star, it's a meteor. So this was the sand, uh, the standoff. I almost said sand off, but I don't see any sand anywhere. There's no sand pit in this park. How lame. <laughs> anyway, uh, this is the standoff. There is a huge standoff, and during the standoff, the meteorite, the meteorite just came down. What a bizarre day, Ex Machina. Very bizarre, yes. Just coincidentally. <laughs> One of the meteorite pieces kills the guy who was holding Lynn hostage.
I forgot. I was going to threaten to walk away from this video for a minute to go grab a donut. Oh. I thought... But then I wasn't hungry for a donut. And I'm like, why would I not be hungry for a donut? You're getting old, Nathaniel. I know. That's it, it happened to me. I remember senior year of college where I was, you know, I bought a thing of M&M's. And I ate half of it, and then my body is like, no, I don't want to have the rest of these M&Ms. I'm like, I'm too old for candy now. You're never too old for candy. I couldn't finish all of the candy, so it's like... You still had some candy. It's still... It's still... At any rate, I make a donut before the end of this video. Okay. Just so you know. To prep for it. We have a meteorite, which is fantastic. It's not a donut. Mm mm. It is not. So basically, Detective Jowd said that he killed the guy in the standoff ten years ago, but clearly the, the meteorite killed the guy, so what's up with that? Kind of hungry, you know. I, I wouldn't mind getting a donut myself, except for no. <laughs> Are we just going to leave our viewers for food? Well, I thought you had left, and so I was just muttering to myself. Um... <laughs> no, I'm still here. I will let you know there will be a grand announcement when it is time for a donut. Okay. Then you were just ignoring me. Okay, fine. Uh, you weren't talking. I... At least not saying anything that I was supposed to react to. Okay, fine. Like what? Never mind, never mind. Detective Jobs will open this. So here is the vital evidence inside the music box. It is the murder weapon from the case five years ago. <laughs> kind of interesting that they sentenced Detective Jowd to death, you know, without a murder weapon. <laughs> Yeah. Oh well. Seriously, was nobody suspicious of the fact that this woman died from a gunshot, and there was no gun found ever? I mean, I was suspicious, but I'm always like that. Oh, okay. Well, maybe that's why it took them, you know, five years to get his, you know, execution processed. Hooray! The execution is stalled! This is fantastic news. I should celebrate with a donut. You should! But I'm not gonna. That would be an amazing plot twist for a uh, fantasy. <laughs> <laughs> no, not you getting a donut. That would be my. <laughs> it's more like something that has been foreshadowed. That's what we'll call it. For Actually, I'm, I'm holding out. <laughs> oh, sorry, go ahead. I was just going to complain about why some people think foreshadowing is a brilliant literary technique, when other times it's just, I'm just going to spoil the ending for you. Like most other things in literature, it's all how you do it mm -hmm. that makes sense. Yeah. 
So, uh, you know, that's just my random complaint. Just because it's foreshadowing doesn't mean it's fantastic. <laughs> now, five shadowing, fantastic. <laughs> It's when they tell you about things that happen after the story's over, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You didn't under you didn't understand what happened in the story, so let's explain it to you one more time. Which is going to happen a lot in this game, I think. The final chapter is the longest, and it's going to explain pretty much everything. Oh yeah, and that's the plot point they brought up at the very end of the previous video. Huh. That's important. So Lynn has been exonerated. She did not shoot Cecil. It was the evil bad ghost that made her do it. Presumably the evil bad ghost was jealous of Cecil's ghost trick powers. Or purposely trying to give him ghost trick powers. That's confusing. Whatever. Oh, wow, you have no idea what that is either. Um, chapter four. It's the thing! <laughs> chapter four. I know way more about this game than I should. Just, it's like, I know, hey, they, wait, chapter four. I can tell you which <laughs> right there. I can't wait until I'm finished with this video walkthrough, and then I can forget all these details about the game. <laughs> Yeah, you didn't kill somebody. It was the uh, meteorite. And Sissel is going on a huge digression, I would say. Sissel has, like, almost completely forgotten to solve the mystery of who he is. Yeah, I guess that's a good point, because I haven't really seen much in the way of identity quest <laughs> in this set of videos that I've been in. Yeah... I mean, good. Use your powers for good. Mm hmm But you're going to disappear shortly, so... And Detective Jowd is making a very basic mistake in morality, which is presuming that intention is the exact same thing as, um, you know, the actual event. Getting philosophical here. Yeah, yeah. The moral status of an action is not wholly determined by the intention. Because, you know, you can do something wrong without intending to uh, do it, right? Right. And you can do something right while intending to do something wrong. Wrong. Yes. I mean, right. You have to be a very, very, um, I don't know, very, I don't know what kind of situation that would be. You know, you're trying to rob a lady, but you accidentally give her a lottery ticket, which makes... Oh, 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 I got one. Or you're trying to kidnap someone, and you accidentally drop a big rock on them. Yeah, 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 yeah. Wait, what? <laughs> I don't know where you come up with these random... <laughs> you were watching this video. That's exactly what happened. Okay, so, uh, I mean... <laughs> This is a plot point that Jowd mentions, which never gets mentioned again. In the hostage situation, Jowd had no idea that Lin was even there. He thought it was just a standoff. He had no idea there was a hostage. Which is kind of weird because, you know, we saw the, the guy with the hostage clearly says, Stand back or I'll shoot her, but... Yeah.
Yes, it took him five years to draw pictures of, like, four people. And they're all, like, stick figures. No, but there are, like, four people he wants to remember. He wants to remember Lynn, the kidnapper, maybe Cabanella. And the kidnapper was... Do, 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 do. Whoa! Bam. Which brings me to the question of um, the the color spots on uh, Detective Zhao's jacket don't really match the colors in the picture he's been painting. Well, maybe he hasn't washed that shirt in a very long time. Okay. So yes, our hero Sissel looks just like the kidnapper who was killed ten years ago by the meteorite. And his name isn't Sissel, too. It's Fissel. <laughs> no, no. It's Rissel. <laughs> that ceiling fan is rather mesmerizing. Mm-hmm. Mr. Mr. Minister. Cliffhanger. Cliffhanger time. Cliffhanger time? Mm-hmm. Like, we don't know whether or not I'm actually going to get my donut after all? Nope. Oh no! And I demand a donut. Guess I'll get one after the video now. Okay. We might have enough time. We might have enough time. Oh yeah, that would be great. You know, I, I run off and then I come back with a donut. They're like, hey, did I miss anything? And then the video ends and oh it'll be hilarious. <laughs> It's, it's Inspector Cabanella, and he he's he's apparently working with the kidnappers. This is our cliffhanger. Meanwhile, is his wife still stuck in the chandelier? Yes. <laughs> yes. She's going to miss her deadline. <laughs> and the greatest mystery, why has Sissel been chasing after a ten-year-old corpse? <laughs> Who am I? Who am I? Who am I? <laughs> anyway, uh, that's the end of the video. Thank you very much for being here, Nathaniel. Thank you for having me, and it's donut time! Yes, so delicious.